Welcome to another episode of In the Line of Wire. I'm Jahara, and today I have with me Sabine Mahmood, a colleague, a friend, and a co-conspirator on a lot of things that we've done. Hi, Sabine. Hi. How are you? Good. It's Good so to great have to be you here. We're going to have a fun show. Absolutely. Nothing serious. I insist. <laughs> okay. Now tell me, tell us a little about yourself for those who don't know you, although I think there are very few who don't know you, but nonetheless, give us a little about your background. One liner. No, a little more than a one-liner. Okay. Well, I started working at 15. Okay. And I tried very hard to drop out of college okay. unsuccessfully. So I'm a wannabe <laughs> dropout. Okay. But I spent all my time outside class to compensate for the lack of being able to drop out. Okay. Um, I started uh, working uh, while I was still in, in school. Mm -hmm. I got introduced to the Mac uh, when I, I started having problems at grammar school when I'd taken computer science and that's when I, I met... That's when you were told that you would never amount to anything in the technical Yeah, field, yeah, right? you know, as, as schools do, they, they break your spirit. Yeah. And, uh, I, and some of us survived despite schools. Right. Um, so, uh, that, so I met Zach in my first Mac right about then, O-levels ke time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fell in love. When I, when I saw that Mac Plus sitting there, and I just knew. The nine-inch screen. <laughs> yeah, glowing away, just so beautiful. And I knew I had to have one. Before that, I had, uh, I had a PC, uh, and all I knew how to do was C prompt and some bricks game that I, that I liked. Yeah, but and everybody I, thinks you're such a techie, so how come that's all you but, do? <laughs> but that's implying that people who use Macs can't be techies. Yeah, that's what people say. But people are... <laughs> People don't know any better. <laughs> okay. But um, Macs were very expensive at that time. Macs were very expensive at that time. I remember calling up. So I saw this Mac uh, at Solutions Unlimited, which was one of the Apple dealerships. And, and I just thought, what a beautiful thing. And I, I need to own one. And I called up Zach and I said, Acha, kitne ka hai? And he said, 47,000. Wow. And this was in 1989. Uh, when 47,000 was a lot of was money an for a student. And so if people used to think that Macs were expensive back then, they really were. Yeah. They, they, they were. And, um, and it was, so it was a, what, a one megahertz machine with, with, a, with a floppy drive. One megabyte of RAM and one floppy drive. No hard drive, obviously. CD-ROMs had not been invented. Right. And I said, I have to have this, I have to have this. I, I could see that my life was going to change because I'd seen it around the office. And um, so then what I did was that for a year, uh, ED money, birthday money, pocket money, that stupid piece of Lunch money. Everything. That's why you were thin at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Such kindness. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I put together all that money and then I was able to buy it. Okay. And then, and then my life changed. So Pink Floyd and the Mac I discovered around the same time. And I taught myself over the summer holidays. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went off to college in Lahore and I took that Mac with me and it used to be like a laptop. I used to lug it around all over the place. Well, it was light enough to carry. Yeah, yeah. And then when I went to the hostel, then I took it with me. I started working on uh, college magazine. You were producing, magazine. yeah, the yeah. magazine. And it was time. great, uh, it was great because I learned so much about life. I had said earlier that I spent all my time outside class, but I was learning a lot about life in Lahore, living on my own, uh, getting around, getting that magazine printed. We used to, uh, Kinnett College, the, the hostel was really like a prison. They only used to let us out once a week. Gosh. <laughs> and in that one day, then I used to rush to the, you know, to some Apple dealership, which got me in touch with the printer. And I used to take out proofs at the... Apple company, then run off to the printer and, uh, you know, there was this Asian women's magazine that I used to take out. So I really learned a lot about desktop publishing and going from design to print, uh, you know, develop my hatred of jaggies then. <laughs> and Zach used to send me these clip art discs that they used to put together and fonts and, and that's when I discovered Tetris. Right. <laughs> and lots of... Yeah, all those. It was an exciting time. It was very exciting. A lot that people take for granted now yeah. was sort of things that you needed to discover and add on to your absolutely, machine. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and then I used to come back for the, for the holidays. And even when there weren't holidays, we were always trying to come back home. And I used to go straight to the office, right. to Solutions Unlimited. And it was so exciting because, um, you know, I learned how to solder and I learned how to 
uh, change motherboards and install RAM and all this fun stuff. And the clients at that time were people like Ardhishir Kawasji and Arshad Mahmood and Tina Sani, and they were they were all using Mac. Arshad uh, used to use it for his music. That's right. Yeah. And uh, and he so had the 840 AV, right? For the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> He has just recently changed it, yeah. And um, so, which you know, most of our viewers will not even have heard of because it was it was before so, their time. Yeah, I know, <laughs> way back in the day, I feel so old now. Yeah, but it was a beautiful machine. It really I was mean, for audio. We, we used it. You, you. I had, had it for the longest time. It was my first machine at uh, enabling technologies. <laughs> yeah, and I still have it actually. I could, I could start. Do you have them? your little Apple Museum? Because I have yes, like a yes. whole <laughs> yes. area in the store which has all these things from right. pins to. <laughs> I, I think I have a style writer as well in terms I of. I think hardware. we should set up an Apple Museum together between you, me, and Zach. We should have loads I think of things. There. Yeah, we'll cover everything. Right. So, I'm, I mean, Macs, yes. I mean, they started desktop publishing, sure. basically. Save the Mac, actually, from. Death and destruction. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. So now, then, of course, you were part of enabling technologies and the team. That yeah. So, uh, so in college, uh, while I was at college, I started working at Solutions Unlimited, yeah. interning, working, whatever. Uh, it was education and yes. work, and I, so I used to come back from college and go straight there. Then uh, I, I think that's what's missing. You know, the polytech part of education yeah. because it's all theory 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 totally. and very very restricted lab work which is not sure. quite the same as real work and i think i mean i was lucky and you know some of us are lucky we we find a passion or, or right. a, something happens and we get fascinated by something and then you know very early That's on what this you want is to what do. you want yeah. to do so yeah. the path then is very clear and then you'll yeah. do whatever it takes to to feed that passion right and i was excited about um about the Mac, I guess, and, and the world that it opened up. And so whether it was graphic design, whether it was, I mean, I, you said that mm, something about me being a techie. And so I used to do multimedia programming, yeah. if you remember. Yeah. But I was, I've always been very fascinated by programming, programming. But I, I, I did a bit of it at school. Uh, and on the Mac, I, I remember sending for Code Warrior back in the day when there was no Amazon. That. And then I, I had this little shrine to Code Warrior. But I, I could never really do anything with it. I think you wanted well, solutions rather than just being restricted to coding. Sure, sure. So, uh, and, and then enabling technologies uh, started and uh, I joined that right out of college. Yeah. And, uh, and we did and some really amazing we work. We did such great fun work and there were just a few of us and that's how I've always believed things should be. A few people who are just crazy about what they do. and. Um, and then at Bits, you did some cutting edge stuff. Uh, so, uh, so the transition from ET, so Solutions Unlimited was also going on. If you yeah. remember, I yeah. ran that for a while and then it just got too, it just got too cut, cutthroat. And, and you couldn't really control a number of things. But I think while Solutions Unlimited was there selling Macs and servicing Macs, we met a number of great people. Yeah. And the philosophy that the company had been set up for was, you know, not pushing boxes, but boy, providing solutions. We, we did. And support. I mean, the kind support. of support that uh, I think Solutions that Unlimited gave, provided yeah. is not something that I see anything. with any and, hardware. And people ask about, you know, now about T2F. And I think those were the early days of meeting all those great people. So yeah. you go there to fix yeah. A Mac that wasn't working or was acting up, and then you'd stay, and then you'd you know talk, you'd talk about yeah. stuff, and it was just so exciting. Um, and then uh, at um, so the transition from solutions to enabling technologies uh, that happened, and then we were doing all this great multimedia work, developing CDs, the first CD. First CD, the first kiosk. And, and ironically, the first CD that we did was for IBM, yeah. done on a Mac. <laughs> But you know, I just have to say at this point that I was very militant back then about Mac versus PC. I'm too, I can't be fussed anymore. And you know, you grow up, <laughs> basically. And there's a new generation of people. And Rabia Garib is rolling eyes saying, grow up. <laughs> like what? She actually ditched the Mac laptop, you know. She just Tell We'll take her on, yeah. on that later. We shall have a separate episode. <laughs> right. You know, um, so people, can't under, you know, people will attack the Mac. But I used Windows. If you remember, I was the youngest and you guys. And we, we made you use this. You're like, <laughs> we're not touching this stuff. All the testing that has to be done, all the compilation on Windows, you do. We were because, bad. Yeah, you, you, it, that was really cruel. So I used it. I had to. 
and so my choices became even more you know reinforced ke it just it, it was really bad and maybe things have improved now and and things have gotten better on on the pc i don't know i wouldn't know i don't actually it's a, it's a preference it's and a preference and so i don't know why anyone has to attack me i i speak from experience there are people who bash the mac who've never used it right you know so anyway so then um, then the web was just becoming really hot at that time and so bits was started in 2000 and uh, we started off doing doing websites and that was a time when um, everyone was setting up it companies because it was the thing to do but you didn't do just websites you were actually doing web solutions, solutions again solutions at that time because yeah. and we never went we never followed that route of setting up a back office in pakistan and a front office in america and let's get american clients we were uh, you know what my passion again at that time was helping local companies harness the yeah. internet and it was such a revelation to me that oh you know you could we, we thought at that time with the whole dot com boom happening that oh you know we're going to save the world from <laughs> death and destruction and all these big companies will die and you know we know how to save uh, how to how to solve problems and it's all going to happen through the internet naive and heady days they were and uh, and i felt that why aren't why aren't people doing this for local companies right. and so it was a it was a bit of a frustrating time as well because companies here just didn't get it and you were creating a new market but within that we still managed to do some exciting stuff and it was all yeah you're right it was about I mean, web it's, solutions it's the same i was talking to somebody in advertising the other day and i said you know I'm not excited by much of the advertising that is created in this in this country and she said to me well you know very often it's the client that restricts us and I think that was true of uh, websites as well because when you try to tell the client that look this is what you can do they would say no 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 use it's blue true. and white and it's it's true to some extent but you know I remember going to see one large client and they said and i'm a big fan of white space in yeah. design and i'm a minimalist uh, designer so we went to see this client and he said there were three or four of them some were okay but this one gentleman in particular had this strong sense of how he wanted his website to look and and that's okay ex- except when you don't agree with <laughs> what they're saying and so he said just fill up the whole screen don't leave any Space. blank yeah. area let's don't lose look. everything <laughs> meaning it seemed almost as if they were paying per pixel and they didn't want they wanted you to put your stamp on every do- you know, every part of the canvas we didn't take that project because i knew that it would be a nightmare working with this person trying to get him to understand our philosophy would have been impossible and then he probably felt that he's signing the check and so he calls the shots and so so we would turn down work where we got a sense that you know it would be difficult to to do things a certain way and i think you need to take a stand you do uh, otherwise you'll you'll end up saying exactly this you'll keep looking for scapegoats you'll keep looking for people exactly. to blame it on exactly. but i have to say that it yeah to some extent clients do uh, but if you but explain it to them some clients are very understanding yeah but we exactly and we would take the time needed to make them understand and that would be on our own time and you know we do extra work we do presentations we try and do it insidiously we say okay here's what you asked for but here's something else and that's why you know we but never Sabine, made much money you <laughs> are much more understanding of clients now i remember when we went to i think one of our earlier clients oh God, yeah. and some one and they said something really stupid and you actually immediately said but that's stupid and i had to kick you under the table <laughs> i, I mean, remember i remember but and i think that i was so lucky that in those early days see i was what 16 17 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and i had people to groom me and nurture me and say ki acha aise nahi karte hain ye is waqt you know there's there's this fine line between assertiveness and aggression no, i mean it's a breath of fresh air uh, but at the same time there is a sort of a middle ground and you have to learn and yeah, someone has yeah. to tell you and they don't teach you these things and well i i, mean, they I don't, don't really count <laughs> <laughs> myself as having gone to college but um, and certainly no business school or anything like that so i was lucky that that enthusiasm and that passion could have been um, nurtured into and yeah i am i'm sometimes now zack tells me ki tumne kyun nahi kuch bola you know and i said nahi there is a time and place for everything remember you guys <laughs> taught me yes but not now to shoot are, my mouth off but, but now, now you, we are going back and we are now sort of shooting yeah. our mouths off <laughs> phases 
Right. So I think you have to you have to create that space. Right. And if you if you believe in something strongly enough or you believe in an idea, you have to fight for it. And yeah. it's just such a cop out to say ki wo nahi karne dete. And so by the time you know, so in those early days, when bits had just started and we were developing our credentials, establishing credibility, you take some of this. Lekin uh, ek point aata hai when you you feel that you know you you people should respect you for what you believe in and what you are offering otherwise they can go somewhere else yeah because you know you are the professional uh, as organizations multinationals especially should accept that they are good at certain things and then there are niches where people which are professionals and which they should is, listen I'm to them i'm assuming why they've come to you exactly. right if someone's good at selling soap yeah uh, then or producing soap but need people to help them sell it using different media then um, you know then why butt into somebody else's space and so you need to fight for that and and we did and when it reached a point when i had been doing this for many years and had now you know the the t2f idea had started taking uh, not shape exactly as t2f but i think my frustration was reaching a certain point uh then i i decided that now is the time for a for a change right um, you know yeah, there comes yeah there comes a time when okay enough of this yeah you don't you know you don't want to take it anymore <laughs> right. and uh, you've done it enough and and then you hope that people will seek you out when they really believe in what you are offering and so but tell me before we move on to t2f which mm. i also want to talk about and how you've used the new media to uh, effectively to not only market it but create an awareness up uh, e-learning mm-hmm. i mean we've been talking about e-learning for donkey's years yeah. has it really happened in no. pakistan has learning really happened in <laughs> pakistan does it really happen in pakistan no, no. come on <laughs> some areas yes okay if you insist <laughs> but e-learning i mean there's so much that we can do using technology it's surprising that it Why? that people Why aren't i mean we're it? we're starting on a new project now for Class six, seven, and eight uh, in math, science, and English. But again, you know, it's a project, and we've spent enough time doing things our way and frittering, frittering away the money that was for the project on actually trying to teach people about, you know, a different way of approaching content and ideas. That this time we're just, you know, we're going to focus on what they want and try and bring in some engagement, you know. make it Some exciting wherever it possible exciting. but at the end of the day we're cognizant of the fact that it's going to be used in government schools and um, you know naturally these kids by the time they get to class 8 then it's metric exams i think the the big problem uh, about why it's not being used one perhaps one reason and it depends what level you're talking yeah. about you know it's not being used at any level it's not being used at any level just yesterday someone called and said ki wo bank hai aur hame e learning uh, you know we can't pick up everyone at one time and send them off for training so we're looking at a cd but you know so far but, back we hmm. worked uh, together on uh, the unilever uh, training project yeah. and why hasn't that been done by others I mean it was such a good way of imparting learning to managers and dif- I think it's probably uh, well I, two reasons one ek to wo uh, jo school level uh, ki agar hum baat karte hain to it's all about passing exams right so i think that's it's one about and tests and exams and it's not about learning and so kids are just used to being in that system of uh, memorization and so uh, and schools don't have the money or aren't willing to spend the money to invest on something like this you would you would yeah. agree that it yeah. takes yeah. it it costs it costs of course you know especially if you're going to do uh if you're going to do intelligent work it not requires not just scanning books and putting them up and there and just doing page music. turners yeah. and saying well here's an interactive cd because i can say next and previous yeah. that's not what e learning is about then people aren't willing to pay then at the higher level let's say the corporate level um they're just again uh, just too steeped in their ways and काम चल रहा है पैसा बन रहा है तो वाई इन्वेस्ट आई थिंक द ट्रबल इज अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट ओके ओके नाउ वी हैड अ बूमिंग इकोनॉमी एंड आई थिंक वी विल हैव अ बूमिंग इकोनॉमी अगेन एंड पीपल आर स्टिल स्पेंडिंग एंड दे स्पेंड लोड्स वेदर इट्स द टेलीकॉम्स वेदर इट्स द बैंक्स वेदर इट्स द मल्टी नेशनल ऑन ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ एडवर्टाइजिंग बट नथिंग ऑन इंटर एक्टिव एंगेज मल्टी मीडिया 
or learning applications? Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's just don't they see it's it? It's tragic. And I've had this, this argument with people at companies like Unilever. For example, they, they would spend four crores on a, on a 30 second television commercial shot in Bangkok, shot beautifully. Right. Same storyline, you know, this woman wakes up, makes tea for her husband. <laughs> and so it's, you know, it's shining and glitzy because it's been shot and edited somewhere else. And some famous movie star has yeah, been used and, for it. And so they'll spend that much money on, on a jaded story. And then they'll come to us and say, well, make this, you know, we've got someone coming from overseas or we need to wow such and such audience, make us a, an animated multimedia uh, whatever presentation and this story. Is the and and, and so you'd say, it. okay, well, this is going to cost you 100,000 rupees. Yeah? 10 minutes of animated content, yeah, you know, 100,000 or 125,000. And they'd be like, that's too much. And, and so I'd say that you've just, frittered away all this money on something that's going to be shown. There's hardly any recall. You'll make this uh, multimedia presentation. You'll use and reuse it as much as you want. It'll stay there as a case study for other people to look at. And I think that there's just no respect for our industry. And, uh, and this was multimedia. Achha, there's, a, there's a problem. I think what it is is that a computer is a button press kare aur ho jayega. and it, it, this is this horrifying There's lack no understanding of, understanding of, of, of the process. design, the process, yeah. the project management. So they management. tell us that, you know, uh, so the growth of XYZ product over the last one year has been 16%. Now, so we'd say, okay, now you've got this content, someone has taken that material, edited it, put it into the workflow. It's gone to the designer. The designer has made a screen. With 16% being this key piece of information, it then goes to the animator, keyframe animation, you know, steps. And why, if, you know, why does our work look better than a PowerPoint presentation? Because it goes through all these steps. There's a designer designs it. A lot of looking at and anti, you're choosing goes. a typeface that works. Of course. Now, when it, so now that text is actually an image, right? And then it's spread over several frames to complete this animation. And they'll come the next day and they'll say, oh, it's not 16%, actually it's 22%. <laughs> Okay. Can you please change and it? Please press a give button. it to us. <laughs> We're waiting in the lobby. Aap zara karke de de. Ab karke de de means, and you know, I was a bit particular about the fact that, okay, things like this, then send it right back to where it started. Make a change in the text file as well. Right. Because then you don't want this mismatch because you know what happens when different uh, pieces of the puzzle are, when it's not aligned and... You know, right. everyone isn't working with the same content and then people are saving different versions and then you end up giving the wrong thing. And so, so that would take a little longer to do it my way. Right. And so there's no understanding. They think you just have to press a button and it gets done. And they say, PowerPoint, we just change it and it just happens. So, it seems like it seems like it seems like it seems Why have you come to us? And I, so I think it's a glaring lack of understanding the process. And the fact that just because it, because it's a computer doesn't mean it's it's all easy. I wish it were. But you know, but even within the software industry, mm -hmm. anybody who does animation or multimedia or new media is considered to be you know frivolous, frivolous it's or an amateur. Work. It's not real technology that's being worked. At. It's it's a, an obnoxious point of view. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, why don't we respect each other's work? I mean, I think what. I think a code, uh, someone who writes code and really is passionate about it, does it well, is also creating, you of know, course. code is poetry. Yeah. And there are many different ways to write it. And there are people who can achieve something in two lines of code and some, someone will plug along and take two days to write 200 lines of code. And the person who can do it effectively in two lines is, is a hero it's as far brilliant. as I'm yeah. so, uh, yeah. so it's brilliant. And, and so someone who's doing a front end for that code is equally, if not more, at certain times, important. Like when the user first comes along, right, my interface design is, is what we interact what? with. Exactly. Once he's gone past that and something, a transaction needs to take place, the coder is, is king or queen. And, and if that process doesn't work, then my beautiful, beautiful design, design, doesn't, design work doesn't work either. So, so it's all critical. And, and this is cause for conflict in a lot of companies where all of these kinds of uh, 
jobs are going on, then, you know, there'll be this big rift between the designers and the, uh, the coders. And the coders will think, inka to bacho ka kaam hai. Ye to koi bhi kar sakta hai. But Photoshop mein bad line bana di, to ye to mein bhi kar sakta hoon. Ye to mera chhe saal ka bhatija bhi kar sakta hai. To is mein kya hai? What is, you know, it, I don't know. That's why, I mean, very often uh, the design team is totally disconnected yeah. with But that's the something at bits that we uh, yeah. really put in an effort in trying to, you, you know, at least create an understanding. Of course. And, and it, it makes for a more streamlined operation as well. Absolutely. And there's more synergy between the teams and also uh, professionally, uh, technically, if a, a designer has produced something that, let's say, Every project is different. If you've been given a week to do something and the designer has come up with something that may take, let's say, a long time to integrate, you know, you, you reassemble everything in HTML and we've pushed the poor browser to a point where it really wasn't designed to do any of what we do to it. Uh, if it's going to take, let's say, an extraordinary amount of time to get it done, then the designer also needs to understand what that integrator, or what that programmer is going to go through. Exactly. And you might decide that in the interest of time, Maybe we can try something a little simpler, right? But they wouldn't know if uh, if they were if, totally disconnected. Yeah. From. And now we we've always been. I mean, from the days of enabling technologies, bits, and a lot of companies in that space, we've always talked about the fact that design schools and tech schools should work on projects together. And now we've gone that extra mile and said tech schools and business schools should work together if sure. we're going to provide solutions for business as yeah. well as solutions for the community, you need all three of these Absolutely. divisions to be working together. Absolutely. But it's not happening. It's not happening. Everyone's in their little insular space, there's competition, and you know how anti-competition I am. I, I, it just it boggles <laughs> my mind. And okay. I just I think it's an awful thing. And people say that, oh, innovation doesn't take place without competition. And anyway, that's a whole other debate, and we will have uh, one of these at T2F one day and everyone can screen their heads off and it'll be great fun. Oh. But, um, but I think, yeah, it's competition. Why, why would people want to open up and share when they, all they're trying to do is get ahead? For a bigger objective? But, who, but how many people are really committed to the greater common good? Because be. businesses, because of competition, inherently businesses are not set up that way and then that's why you see these CSR departments, you know, these separate little things designed to, to make everything okay, you know. So, I, okay, I'm doing my little bit for the community. <laughs> but if you integrated it into your business, you wouldn't need a CSR exactly. department. You wouldn't need to make this big fuss about CSR because you... Should be socially responsible companies as a whole. And it's, tr it's sad that we need to even talk about it, you know, but b look at what we've seen with all this white collar crime taking place clearly now people are feeling this great need to show how good and noble they are, so they set up these divisions. Mm -hmm. but, um, but this collaboration, I think, with independent entities hasn't taken place. I think probably logistically it's not possible. And, no, and no, they have to finish the curriculum. And they, have to and they need to finish the curriculum because those kids need to pass exams because somebody needs to do well. It's so again, it just boils down to competition. Correct. Anyway, we were working on a project that may make slight difference to okay, what's happening really good and to we'll be. involve you definitely and we're always true, looking for volunteers and a true liberal arts university will will do this will do this I, I haven't been to university abroad so i don't know but from what i hear and you know what peers talk about is this again this cross pollination of ideas and you're encouraged to go and take courses at it makes other for a more holistic human being who will absolutely. be more successful in any definition of the word successful absolutely and so if you're too focused and if then you know you're, you have this tunnel vision of specialization then you miss out on all these other exciting things like the designers also need to know not just about technology but about business correct they're choosing an area that is a, a commercial area even an artist look we're all in the business of selling an idea right. and so everyone needs to sell and so everyone should know how to right you know and use whatever uh, whatever means that are available that are that are not criminal to to do so correct no totally agreed okay now let's switch gear and move on to t2f uh, that started as something as a space mm -hmm. where you wanted culture to be nurtured and and you've used technology very effectively to get the word out, to build a community. And, you know, you've got supporters and people who are now sort of 
willing to volunteer their time, volunteer money, volunteer uh, all sorts of things mm -hmm. to make things better for T2F because they feel that the space had made has made things better for them. Mm -hmm. uh, how and why is it that more people don't use technology in the way that you have? First, well, tell us how you've used it. Right. And so maybe people will get ideas. Well, when uh, when the space was being set up. Because my background was in technology, the first thing that one did was set up a website. Right. And again, there was not that much time, and um, I was using people from bits to to do the site, and you know, in their in their hardly available free time. But I said, "Ye karna hai, please kar do." And um, so it was a small, maybe I think it was just a one-page site initially, but it had, and I and I wish people would use this more often to legitimately get. Uh, users to sign in that when you're developing a full-blown website it's going to take some time put in a sign up to be alerted when the site goes live kind of little widget right. or when and the project starts or if sure. you're interested in the basic message whatever it is that you yeah. know whether it's a chocolate company or whatever. it's a yeah. tech company whatever you know sign up and we'll let you know and not under construction <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you know do a, do one page but make it complete within itself right you know uh, so we did that and, uh, and people started signing up because they were curious and we had this one page PDF that I was sending to friends and family, no spam, uh, just, just to people we knew and we'd say that if you know anyone who'd be interested, pass it on and so people would forward it and they would go and sign up on the site. And so when we started, we had a legitimate uh, base of interested people. Right. And they had opted in, they had signed up. And so, so we used, so the mailing list became the key way to disseminate information. And very early on, we, um, you know, a decision was made that nothing was ever going to be printed and send, sent out. It's a, it's a non-profit organization with a strong environmental agenda as well. And, and frankly, now it's just logistically impossible with two or three events a week, you just can't. And also it's cost effective. It's I very mean, cost effective. It also makes good business sense. Absolutely. So there were many reasons why uh, one But let's take a part. step back before yeah. you, you, you know, you developed a theme, you decided on colors, fonts, all right. that. I want you to talk about that because people okay. don't. They just sort of so, evolve and yeah. evolve in all directions. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously one of the, the, the key things initially was uh, building a brand and positioning. Right. And so, and, and then the most tangible output of that process is a logo. Right. And so, and so, you know, color colors were decided upon fairly early. Um, four colors: earth tones, you know, orange, green, uh, brown, and yellow. Our crockery was that color. And so, once that was decided upon, that these okay, so I mean, it was a personal choice. Right. These are colors oh. I like, yeah. and these work well together. Um, instinctively, I felt they, they, they worked, and so everything kind of worked around that theme. And, um, and I think it's important to develop that kind of blueprint, that style guide, which then gets used across all media. Right. You, you use and it that on works in any size, because people forget when they're making a design that it also needs to go on a visiting card, sure. it also needs to go on mugs and cups. And, and now also. there are all sorts of issues that, you know, with social networking, so you've got this logo, does it work on Facebook? I mean, right. yesterday I was helping a client at, in the middle of the night, they're like, we need to launch our Facebook page, our logo is rectangular, it's fine, it, you know, on, on the page, in the top left, you've got your big logo and it's right. fine. But then what Facebook does is it creates from that image a little square uh, thumbnail, which is then used all over so your site and everywhere else. How does it become a square? <laughs> so what they do is they let you adjust the frame a little bit, but it doesn't always work because a rectangular logo, all all the elements in that logo are working together. Now it's not necessary that a tiny portion from that is going to work. Right. You know. So I had faced that with my own um, with, with T2F and had suffered a little bit. Now I've just made a a different picture when, when we had our second birthday. Mm -hmm. But there was this problem. So now, today, people are going to need to design for YouTube. Right. Unka logo ka ek size hai that works properly. Facebook ke liye, Twitter ke liye. Uh, none of these things were a consideration when we started but, just two <laughs> years ago. But are ad agencies learning this? No. Because they they're the brand managers the, for most of these they companies. They still design websites at 300 TPI with crop marks. I mean, hello. <laughs> it's 
it's uh, but it it's needs to be maybe we should run some sessions for ad agencies really seriously you know a job if if pasha decide see for for those to be successful Somebody they need to be willing right to learn yeah. from us you know and and in this case we <laughs> will be marginalized as techies right the techies marginalize us as creative types and that's why and bits was always on the fringes of <laughs> right. and et as well <laughs> yeah you know so we could go in whichever direction we wanted it was quite fun but this is the thing that everyone's in their comfort zone everyone knows everything why would they want to learn from you and me we it would be great it's but why is it that we are willing to have an open mind to learn from everyone i mean it has because to we be. use max <laughs> to be <laughs> you know we're going to get a lot of anti mac mail <laughs> you get comments it, no? and comments and i don't read comments <laughs> moderate the comments on this one send them to us for review okay yeah. now so i think that needs to be done you're right they have to be open to the fact that they need to learn about this and so any branding that needs to be created for an organization right on day 1 right so now decide. it's so email email yeah um so we have uh, i mean i was uh, with with email i decided early on i mean again these are things you you learn right there are people who are looking at it on a blackberry there are people who are looking at it on a on a mac on a pc on different types of email software not everything not everyone uses very fancy software and on different browsers on different browsers initial. and so i stuck to text Right. but i used those colors or a set uh, you know so that when people even see text based email they should be able to make that there should be a connect and it should it should resonate with them that okay this is coming from this organization so it was just simple text with one image that would wrap around the text on the right side and it's easier for me as well because it's a template right and uh, there was no like you know okay ek baqaida poster ja raha hai there's that one image if it doesn't open on your a computer doesn't matter it's not a deal breaker right. because it doesn't have any critical information it's just right. a visual embellishment the critical information are things like subject line then i the then signature I, with the all signature, the information and then someone said well, you know can you put the date into the subject line because just automatically we can when it comes in without even opening it we can see ke hum free hain ya nahi us din right. you know uh, so So making it easier for your yeah uh, and and customers. those some of those things evolved along the way as we learned right uh, how to to better reach people so you design for email pehle to aapka logo ho gaya style guide ho gaya you get your fonts your colors your usage where you're going to do what right and and your logo needs to now now two years down the line i would say ki aap facebook ke liye twitter ke liye twitter ke liye to now you can just change your whole background right. which is really thing, neat yeah. uh, so you know do a background for that If you're doing stuff on YouTube, make sure you have a logo that fits in there. Black and white. You know, we used to in when you guys were early teaching, days. Used to say, "Okay, अच्छा ये fax कैसे होगा ये आपने तो है तो बहुत अच्छा." But you know, when it's sent by fax to Hong Kong, it's going to look crap. Yeah. So can you so please? So it should design? work in black and white yeah. as well. And now we're like fax. <laughs> you know, what's that? So I mean, the, so all these things were important, yeah. and they still are. And, still, and, and the medium keeps so changing, now, so you need to. I think there's a, a heightened. Uh, um interest in branding now yeah and people even are, in the it industry even in the it industry probably because of things like twitter and facebook yes you right. know because people are writing a lot about blog blog posts etc about how to use twitter and facebook for your brand yes and so people are now talking about branding and so then you go back to these basics and i think the basics don't change no fundamentals exactly of right. positioning and you know which you can really pick up any right book and now uh, you all tell us a little about how you used all this new medium for marketing t2f uh, it was the only choice and yeah. and i think uh, no you but you I used think, it very effectively i think we we learned uh, one of the things we talked about earlier on was that clients nahi mante so this was also a way to show how it could be done how it could be done and i think the the critical thing here which none of the companies really uh, focus on is content and the reason all this worked and i've had this discussion with rabia also before ki uh, the product has to be strong now the reason our facebook page has worked is because there's always something new happening then how is it happening it's because there's something happening in the physical space right. so people have chosen that medium and we'll see that of all the fans we have on facebook versus 
I think the profile of people we have on email, we only ask them for their email address, but you know, you get to know when people come, they'll say, Acha, we're on your mailing list. So you have a general sense of the sort of people who are on the mailing list versus those who are on Facebook. The younger crowd is on Facebook. Now you can choose, right? You can go on our site and say, okay, um, I want to join the Facebook page. I want to sign up for the mailing list. I want SMS alerts. I want to get on Twitter. Google Some of them calendar. choose all. Some will choose all if they're really <laughs> crazy and intense. And some will choose what they like. Right. And, and What's so... What's the percentage? Have you done a... No, I mean, no, not really. But I mean, there are about 2,700 people on the mailing list and about 3,500 on Facebook. Oh, okay. And the interesting thing about Facebook is that it was a stealth project. I was writing blog posts on Facebook's user interface on its privacy policy and then I just thought oh and again one and a half years ago Facebook it, people were using it but it's not, not for business no and but now everybody's using now it. everyone's using it so I set up this group Oswak pages nahi and I set up a group and I just wanted to see what would happen for me that was my experiment into social networking and seeing how people so to this day I have never invited anyone to join the group Okay. Or the page ever. Right. Just, but they have. But they have on their own. So if I did, if I pushed it, uh, I think people would, uh, it would have been double or triple. Yeah. Uh, but I feel that those people who are there are there because they want to be there. Correct. Right. And so they'll, they'll value the information. And so I've never, like my marketing approach is probably not by marketing standards very good because I don't push anything. Right. Here, I'm going to tell you once. I was like this in my exams as well, which is why I did very badly in my board exams. I went from O levels to inter and BA, and there we were told to repeat. Karo. And I've never been able to do that. I feel that you can say it Here it is, and you know, yeah. <laughs> go read and see, and if you like it, you'll, you'll opt in. Right. I'm not going, I just can't, because I know how irritating it is when the same email comes to me 20 times. I was right. mortified, you know, we had a little glitch in our SMS alerts and to some carriers it was being sent three or four times and right. you know, you'd get it. And so people would probably think that we are sending four times, whereas it was not so. Yeah. Uh, even for SMS, like people would say, we're going to, you know, why don't you do SMS alerts? And I'd, and I'd say, well, you know, it's the most invasive uh, thing ever. कि आपको 12 बजे रात को कोई बोल रहा है कि जी यू नो ग्वादर में ये जमीन मिल रही है बट सम पीपल लुक एट इट एज रिमाइंडर्स आई मीन दे डू हैव बैड मेमोरीज सो नाउ हैव ऑप्ट इन एसएमएस अलर्ट्स एंड अगेन लुक देयर इज अ देयर इज अ डिफरेंस इन मीडियम राइट ऑन फेसबुक पीपल आर यूज्ड टू दीस इंटरप्शंस ऑल द टाइम सो इफ यू सेंड समथिंग आउट टू और थ्री टाइम्स अ डे आई थिंक पीपल विल टेक इट ऑन माय मेलिंग लिस्ट आई अगेन लुकिंग एट द प्रोफाइल ऑफ पीपल तीन चार दिन पहले इवेंट से एक दफा भेज दिया है रेली सेंटर रिमाइंडर बिकॉज देन दस गूगल कैलेंडर दस एस एम एस एंड एस एम एस विल बी सेंड टू यू टू थ्री टाइम्स एंड देन वंस ऑन द डे इट सेल्फ एज अ रिमाइंडर बिकॉज द मीडियम काइंड ऑफ अलाउज दैट और यू एक्सपेक्टेड फ्रॉम दैट मीडियम एंड सो आई थिंक द सक्सेस और यू नो वट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट हैज बिन कॉन्शियंशियसनेस एंड एंड सिंपथी It to to the recipient and and, and being, that's important and I think that's critical and I and I've been very careful about uh, making sure that things are only sent to people who sign up. Um, working hard on the content, I slave over those emails, you know. And But uh, that was from early days. Uh, we often told people who wanted to set up websites that uh, look, don't do it just for the sake of doing of it, doing it yeah. unless there is something that will bring them back. Sure, There's no but point. that's the whole thing that content is critical and yeah. people would say, Acha site ban gai, ab IT department ko de do. <laughs> and as content management systems started coming about, and there was a time when we used to build them now, obviously we use uh, tools that are out there and customize, but again, that's fine. You, you know, you build a framework and you give it to someone, but then someone from the company who is passionate Needs about the company, marketing action. people or content people, we would always say hire content people, create promotions. You know, again, today, abhi bhi yehi masla hai ke website ban gai, it's, it's not treated like a serious medium. 
uh, they'll run a promotion, they'll advertise on hoardings here, there, and everywhere. They'll spend the money, and then suddenly they'll remember and say, "Oh, watch a website, you should put it on." Boy, you put it on the website. Pe dalne, break the news there and have the entire promotion there in your newspaper ad on your hoarding. Say, give a little teaser, yeah, and say that everything is there. Right. And now they can do that. Now there is that much more adoption. Some organizations have started started to do doing that. that, but everyone's waiting for adoption. Everyone's waiting, 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 and we just, I, you know, I said, look, this is the only way I know how. This is my area. and so this is what i'm going to use and so again i was passionate about the web and what it could do and it it is living proof that that it works that it works great well sabeen we'll have to do another show because there's so much more to talk about and um, you know we haven't even scratched the surface yeah but it's been great thank you so much it's for coming pleasure. in and talking about yeah. all this and and for reliving memories and for reliving yeah. memories it's been great thank, thank you. you very much That was Sabine Mahmood, uh, COO of Beyond Information Technology Solutions, also director of Peace Niche, whose project T2F is something that all of us, at least in Karachi, know about, and people living in Lahore and Islamabad pine to be there. Well, you just have to move to Karachi or at least visit. This is Jahara signing off from In the Line of Wire. Till next time.